Good morning, Believe Nation. It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe that you have something special that when you unleash it, it will be able to change the world. So to help you on your journey, today's message is run after your destiny. Over to you, Bishop T.D. Jakes. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. Life demands that you pick up the pace. If you don't pick up the pace, you're going to be left behind. I'm amazed at the people that lack the flexibility to pick up the pace. They just get in a rut. I stroll down here and I'm going to stroll back. I'm going to stroll over here. I'm going to stroll over there. One of the most amazing things about the disaster at Malaysia is that when it happened, everybody had to pick up the pace. All the news media had to pick up the pace. They were booking night flights and flying over here and flying over there. Somebody had to work overtime, won't be home for three days, typing in the middle of the night, research going on, because when something happens, everybody got to pick up the pace. That's why I can't deal with people who cannot pick up the pace. Don't be strolling when I got a 911 on you. I need people who can pick up the pace. Flap your name and say, pick up the pace. Something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. Pick up the pace, something is about to happen. I came to tell the young people, pick up the pace, pick up the pace, pick up the pace, something is about to happen. The danger of low expectations. I would rather aim for the stars and not hit them than to not aim at all. I would rather go after it and not get it than not go after it at all. I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. I don't want to live with the idea, wonder what would have happened had I done more with my life. I'm going to go for it, come hell or high water, I'm going after my destiny. Touch your neighbor and say, run! You got to run after your destiny. You can't stroll after your destiny. You can't walk after your destiny. You got to run! Somebody holler, run! You gotta run. You gotta run. You gotta run. You can't just wake up in the morning and let me see what's gonna happen today. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna wear. I don't know what I'm gonna cook. I don't know where I'm gonna go. I just woke up. Oh, you should stay in the bed. Give the day to somebody who's gonna run after their destiny. Give the day to somebody who has a plan, who has a strategy, because success is never an accident. And if you don't want it, get out of my way. Because there are some people who want to do something with their life who will run. If you know what you want to do, if you have a clear vision in your head for the, something you want to launch, a person you want to pursue, some opportunity that you want to go after, like if you know, if you have a crystal clear picture of what you want to do, then you need to go after it right now. Most people sit on it. Most people have genius ideas and they sit on it for their entire life and then they see somebody else make tons of money off of your idea, right? And you get, you get old and grumpy and you start to complain. And that's not a life that you want. That's not a life that I want for you either. It's not that somebody stole your idea. You didn't put in the work. You didn't do anything with it. It was their idea and they deserve all the success. You can't look at them and be bitter and angry that they stole your thing when you did nothing about it. This is important. Whenever you have an idea, whenever you have an opportunity, whenever you, you want to go off and pursue something, there's a window of opportunity for that thing to happen. There's a window based off of your life circumstances, based off what the market wants, based off you know, where you are right now, your mindset, your interests, your passions, your skills, and desires. There's this window for this thing to happen. And that window may be six months, and maybe a year, maybe two years, but th like, there's a limited amount of time and that window is going to close. And that's why you need to run. That's why Bishop Jakes is so passionate about running towards it because that thing is not gonna be there forever. 
And if you wait too long or you're crawling, you're walking, you're barely getting there, that window's gonna shut in your face and you're gonna miss your opportunity where you could have done something amazing if you just ran at it. And I think what you'll find is, this is definitely in my life, you'll have moments of certainty and uncertainty and certainty and uncertainty and you constantly kind of ride these, ride these different waves. It's important when you get that moment of certainty, that clarity, that you go all out. And when you don't know what to do, when you have the moments of uncertainty, then you're exploring, you're trying to find something. You don't want to get stuck on one path that's not right for you. And so if I look at my career as an example, when I was with my software company, right, 19 years old, had my biotech software company, I knew what I wanted to do. I was grinding, I was hustling every single day, putting the work in, crazy number of hours, and that was three years of my life. And then when I sold the business, I didn't know what to do. You know, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I explored, and, and that was the uncertainty. So the software company, certainty, working hard every day, running, trying to get my dream to happen, and we sold our business at the right time. Right? We sold our business before the window closed. If we didn't push as hard and we didn't run as fast and we waited, we would have missed our moment and I wouldn't have been able to sell my company. So I sold it then. I didn't know what to do next. Wandered, explored, traveled, said yes to a whole bunch of different things. And that's where it's hard to see measurable progress. When you're uncertain, you're trying many different things and most of them aren't gonna work out. A lot of the things that I said yes to it was a one-off thing and I knew I'm not going to go back and do that again until I found my next level of clarity, my next moment, right? The next wave riding up, which was with the website. I had my website. I was creating content. It was doing well. People asked if they can contribute content to my website. That started doing well. Then I realized you could make money from the website with advertising. And so I realized, okay, this is, this could be the next big thing, but I can't create all the content myself. I need, other people, I need an army. And so we recruited 5,000 plus people to write for the website. And we got bigger names. We got Seth Godin and Guy Kawasaki and Donald Trump, who at the time was doing Apprentice and you know, was the big name in entrepreneurship and Zig Ziglar and Jack Canfield, like big, big name people to contribute articles to the website. And I just was singularly focused, like here is my window, right? The window is there for now. I gotta run at it. I gotta throw everything I can at it. I gotta get as many people, get as many articles, run. And then the combination of me losing my interest for doing that side of the business and the market changing and Google's algorithm changing led to that window shrinking, that that was not as big an opportunity anymore. And so I got everything I could out of it while that was lasting and then I dove back into this uncertainty, like, hmm, what should I be doing? I need to do something else with my time. I need to focus in. I need to build something else. I'm, I don't know what I want to do. I'm exploring different paths. One of those paths happened to be YouTube. I made a couple of YouTube videos. Like, this is pretty cool. I like it. I like the feedback. I like how it feels to be on camera. I want to do more. I want to share my mission. I want to have an impact. YouTube seems to be an interesting way to do it. And then as I started doing more of it, I realized this is a moment. This is my next window. I got to, I got to, Go all out. For you guys who have YouTube channels and are complaining about trying to make one video a week, two videos a week, I realize that this is a window right now, that I figured it out right now, how things work, how YouTube works, how the algorithm works, how reaching entrepreneurs work, how to make good videos. Like it's all coming together in a perfect storm for me right now. And I need to run. It's why I'm making three videos a day. It's why I'm grinding so hard in creating content. It's why I'm building up my team to be able to answer your comments and take requests and make new series. It just is all working right now and you'll have those moments, right? I've recognized it. It happened with my website. It happened with my first business. This is where I'm at right now. This is my moment on YouTube to run hard as fast as I can. And I'm sure at some point I might lose my interest in YouTube, the algorithm might change, the way that I'm doing it may not work anymore, and that window will close. And then it'll lead back to that uncertainty, testing things out. And it's just constantly doing this. That's, you know, your entire life. And so when that wave comes, when you find that clarity, when you find that focus, when you know what you want to do, it's so important that you run after it because you will have these few moments in your life where things just become that crystal clear that you have to go out and do it. And unless you do, that window will shrink, will shrink, will shrink, will close. Somebody else will make huge money, huge impact off of your idea 
and you have to wait for the next thing to come. And maybe there's ways to speed that up. But when you get that moment of clarity, I'm urging you to run as fast as you can, as hard as you can, for as long as you can. So the question today, today is I'm curious, what were those moments of clarity in your life, that wave that you needed to ride? What are some of those that have come up? Those three of the four moments, maybe one or two, maybe you haven't found it yet, but I'm curious. What are those moments of clarity that you had that this is the wave, everything is matching up for me, my interests, my passion, my skills, combined with the market and where it's going, that it just made sense that now I need to go all out, that now I need to run. I'd love for you to share your experience, leave it in the comments below. I also wanna give a quick shout out to Girish. Thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word. It really, really, really means a lot to me and I hope you enjoyed the read. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love and I'll see you guys again tomorrow morning for another shot of Espresso. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. Why baseball? When I was four or five, six years old, it was my first love, the first thing that I fell in love with. And I thought most of my life, I thought that I was gonna pursue baseball as a profession. Second hardest decision of my life. I remember sitting on the edge of my bed, crying over it, deciding what I was gonna do, and I ended up choosing football, and I don't regret that. But I do believe in pursuing passions and what's on your heart, and this is something that I'm passionate about. What's it say about you that you're even given the opportunity as a 29-year-old man who hadn't played baseball in a decade? There's certain things in life that we love and we have chances to pursue them, but a lot of the time the fear of the unknown, the fear of failure gets in the way. I don't want that fear to creep in. I don't want the unknown to creep in. I want to be someone that I pursue whatever is on my heart with everything that I have and if I fall flat on my face, then guess what? I'm going to get right back up. I've read that you're a farce. I've read that you're a joke. I've read that you're an embarrassment, not only to yourself, but to the game of baseball. The first thing is I'm so thankful that I don't have to read it. I don't have to listen to it. I don't have to live the roller coaster that the rest of the world lives of my life. I don't care what they write about me. They've written a lot of things over the last 15 years about me. Some good, some not good, some just because they want to sell papers. I don't necessarily care. I, at the end of the day, I want to pursue my passion because I believe when you're pursuing what's on your heart, when you're pursuing what you're convicted by, then I don't have to live with regret 10, 15, 20 years from now looking back saying, what if? What if I would have tried that? Where it's a success is if I give my all to it. If I get to live out that dream every single day, whether that's in single A, double A, triple A, or it's in the big leagues, you know, because joy doesn't come from success. Joy comes from knowing your design and being able to pursue that every single day and knowing that I get to live out a dream. So all that stuff I was just dreaming about, like this is the possibilities that can happen if I move to California or, if, you know, because I was working really hard here and a lot of comedians come down from LA and say, man, you need to go to California because you're pretty good. I was getting a lot of good advice and a lot of people who was really rooting for me. Yeah, just went and did it, but I had a dream and that dream uh, gave me um, you know, confidence to keep going. The power of believing and dreaming is real because that's all I did was dream and, and believe and uh, that this, these things could happen and it made me feel good. And that was my, that's true wealth. If you believe and you're doing something, you have a goal, you have a dream to get somewhere, it makes you feel good. Honestly, that there's no difference. The way you win it, the way I win at the game, I'm, I, I go at business as hard as I win at the game. You know, I study businesses and I study people as much as I study people trying to figure out plays, mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of something I told the kids yesterday, you know, when you see transition really start to happen, when you really want to transition to something, master it. Mm -hmm. There's no limits, you know? Don't let the world ever put limits on you. You can do anything you want to do, but make sure if you have a vision, make sure the vision is written, you know? Make sure you have something to actually chase and not just hoping and wishing and all these different things. So if I, if I, I, tell, I tell guys this all the time, put your plan together mm -hmm. and then work the plan. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't work somebody else's plan, right? That's one thing about the league. I love the league, but the league is somebody else's brand, mm -hmm. right? You have to create your own brand yourself and your brand is whatever you feel like doing, whatever your heart is passionate about, chase it.